Hey, how can I help you? I have here an Egyptian scarab ring. It was given to me by my father a couple of years before he passed away. And I'd like to know if this is the real thing or not. All right. So was your dad like Indiana Jones or something like that? Not, not in the <laughs> least. The scarab ring is from the 18th dynasty, 1500 BC. My father received the ring from his stepmother, who was a world traveler. I'm selling the ring because I would like to see it go to someone who could really appreciate the artifact. This is really cool. Do you mind if I pick this up? Oh, no, no, go right ahead. OK. It's a scarab. Way back in Egypt, everybody had one. It was more or less the equivalent of people wearing a cross or something like that. I mean, sometimes you'd drill a hole in it, put like a little piece of leather around it to really, really extravagant jewelry that the pharaohs would wear. Right, right. Scarabs are generally carved from stone and glazed either blue or green. It looks like an old scarab, but the question is, is it really 3,000 years old? Ooh, what is this? Oh, that is the card from the guy that sold it over in Egypt. And he wrote on the back that it's guaranteed that it's from the 18th dynasty, uh, 1500 BC. OK. So I'm assuming you want to sell it? Yes, I do. And how much would that be for? I would like uh, 15000 for it. OK. Do you mind if I have someone look at it? No, that oh. would be great. Okay. I'd really like that. I mean, this thing is truly is 3,500 years old. There, there's something here. But I am not a 18th Dynasty scarab jewelry expert. But believe it or not, I know someone who is. <laughs> <laughs> really? No kidding. Yes, I, I do. Give me five minutes. Okay. I'm going to give him a call and see what he thinks of it. That okay? Sounds good. All right, sounds I'll be good. right back. All right, thanks. I am really looking forward to an expert coming because the ring is something different that the, I think the shop would have no problem selling. I haven't seen too many of them around. She has a scarab ring her grandmother picked up in Egypt, and this is the only paperwork she has right here. And remember, they don't have a better business bureau there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just put it that way. Do you mind if I touch the ring? Oh, go right ahead. Um, this beetle was a dung beetle. As these dung beetles would roll this big ball of dung that they would deposit their eggs in, that one will die. A new beetle would come from that ball and then turn around and start pushing the ball. And so for the Egyptians, when they looked at that, they said, well, look, that thing's magical. It's got eternal life. And consequently, it became a very magical bug to them. That is neat. The Egyptians put the scarab on rings. They put it on necklaces. They painted it on the front of the mummy and even on the entryways to the Egyptian temples. So that's how important of a symbol the scarab was. So is it real? I brought my little magnifying glass along here so that maybe you guys can see as well. Right there is a sun, a rake, and a scarab. Underneath it, an ibis. And that says to me, 18th dynasty. And King Tut came from this dynasty. Usually one of these went in almost every mummy. So, and there were a lot of people that died in all those thousands of years, so there are quite a few of these in Egypt, is what I'm trying to say. Now, the second thing you have to look at with this, that when I study the gold work on this, can you see the rope work on there? That sort of gold work is very indicative of like turn of the century, 1900 to maybe like 1905, 1910. It could have been made in Egypt, and a lot of those antiques uh, went on with the King Tuck exhibit to be souvenirs. So this is probably a real scarab, though. I think that is a real scarab, and from the look of it, it looks 3,000 years old. OK, so what do you think it's worth? Well, you can get a scarab like that, I'm going to say right now, for maybe hmm, 250 So 250 mm -hmm. plus like $200 in gold? So you're looking at? Right around $450 to $500. Thanks, man. Okay. You're the best. Thank you very much. Thank you for I, solving the mystery. I enjoyed seeing it. I think this is an excellent buy for the shop because the ring is beautifully created and it's still in good condition. OK, so obviously it's not going to be $15,000. No, I guess not. I would give you right around $350 for it. Um, $1,500? No, it makes no economic sense for me to do this. I can literally make these for $450. 500 
No. <laughs> I'm being really, really nice at 350. I really am. 375? <laughs> I'll tell you what, I will give you 360 bucks. All right. I'll take it. We got a deal then. We got All a right. deal. Follow me right up front. I think I'm going to take the $360. My husband and I can go out and have a really nice steak dinner and lobster, too. Hey, what's up, man? Nice to see you. What have we got this time? OK, this time I have brought for you the most incomplete book that I've ever brought. This is an actual printed page from the Gutenberg Bible, the very first printed book. Well, if there was printing before Gutenberg's printing press, but those all sucked. <laughs> This time, I think I brought Rick something really unbelievable. It's a single leaf from the Gutenberg Bible. It's really the first substantial printed book uh, in the history of the world. So we have a leaf here, which is a page. This is one page from the Gutenberg Bible. You may ask why there is only one page. In the 1920s, a famous book dealer named Gabriel Wells came upon an incomplete copy of the Gutenberg Bible and he broke it up into single pages, and he put it with a bibliographical essay, and he had it very beautifully browned, and he sold them as single pages where he puts a leaf of the Gutenberg Bible, and in the approximate years that they believe it was printed. Is it printed on the other side? Yeah, it's a double-sided leaf. It's printed on very fine paper that they imported from Italy into Germany in the period and it's been hand rubricated with colors with red and blue after it's been printed so that it looked more like a manuscript. That's pretty amazing. The Gutenberg Bible to this day is regarded as one of the most beautifully printed books. He had to invent the type. He had to invent the press that it went in into. He had to invent the ink. It was a massive undertaking. It's like the internet to think how quickly they went from printing a book like this to having people copy the invention, to go throughout Europe setting up printing centers all through Europe within 50 years. It literally was like the internet. It went from this to scientific books, to fiction, to dirty pictures, to uh, a little bit of everything. And well, there's no more important invention in the history of democracy than the printing press, because it's the democratization of knowledge. It puts the power of knowledge into the hands of the people. Johann Gutenberg invented the first practical, movable type printing press. And with that, he printed the Gutenberg Bible. Before that, books were still written by hand. And the only people that could afford them were the super rich. So because of his printing press, he eventually brought literature to the masses. So that makes anything associated with Gutenberg and his printing press worth a literal fortune. And you found this in one of your travels? Well, this came from an estate. It originally belonged to a printer, and I bought it from the estate. I mean, I was beyond thrilled to find it. This particular leaf is from the Old Testament. It's from the second book of Chronicles, which is towards the end of the Hebrew Bible, and it talks about the purification of the temple in Jerusalem. Cool. OK, so the big question, how much you want for it? I came up with a number and you better brace yourself, but remember the importance of the book of $65,000 for the page. OK. Like always, I'm going to call Rebecca. Um, let me get her down here. Oh, this I, is. Uh, I would be delighted. She's going to be. I, I mean, think she'll be flawed to see it. $65,000. Hello. The world's most famous book person meets the world's most famous book. <laughs> <laughs> is that what I think it is? That's a page of it. <laughs> Right, a leaf. A page to me, a leaf to you. Well, a page is actually one side and then the other, so it's two pages, one leaf. All right, you got me, okay. Well, the most important thing is it's a leaf from the Gutenberg Bible. Yeah, and I just touched it. The Gutenberg Bible, <laughs> I just okay. touched it. So when was the last complete Gutenberg Bible sold? The, the right. full set hasn't been sold since the 70s. Yeah, it's been decades upon decades. Okay, and yeah. in the meantime, other books have gone for over $10 million. I mean, this would just be astronomical. It would break all the records. So the thing is, is it real? Can I hold it up to the light? Sure, sure. Okay. I've seen Gutenberg Bibles before, but I don't think that I've had a chance at this length to really inspect one. Like, this is a chance that most people are never going to get, even rare book specialists. I would touch it, but I'm afraid I'd catch on fire. <laughs> 
I'm holding it up to the light so that I can see the chain lines that you see in handmade paper that comes specifically from paper of this period. It's real, correct? Yes. OK. What's it worth? Dealers I know and trust, they're going to place this around $80,000. Uh, so I think that is fair to ask for the way things are looking right now in the market. You're the best. Yep. Happy to help. Well, thanks so much, Rebecca. Really yep. appreciate it. Mm -hmm. So you heard from your friend and eminent book expert. So how much would you be willing to go? Of all the business we've done over the years, and like... I you mean, give me a number what you're comfortable with. 40,000. <laughs> I can't do 40 on it. I mean, I mean that, that's what I feel comfortable with. Auctions yeah. are definitely not an exact science. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, 40,000 is so on the low scale in terms of what I can, I can take for it. I mean, I didn't even want to come down so low, but 55. You know, I'm, I'm trying to be fair with you, Rick. I, I, and I know you are. I would go 45,000. That's the best I could do. I'm going to offer it to you for 47,000, and it would be foolish for you to say no. And that is a price I did not imagine I would even agree to. I have a CFO in an office right down the hallway that's going to be really mad at me. So 47, we got to do. You're not going to be mad when you make <laughs> make a small fortune. Out um, of it. it's amazing. Uh, I'll meet you right up front. Let me get someone to keep an eye on this, and I'll do some paperwork. Well, why do you need someone to keep an eye? It's only a page. No, it's two pages. That's one leaf. Oh, uh, you're right. <laughs> <sighs> that's right. I now own a page of the Gutenberg Bible. Hey, how's it going? What do we have? We have a pottery duck from Colima, Mexico. All right, uh, Pops, you know anything about ducks from Colima, Mexico? Um, a little bit. Um, you liked rubber duckies when you were a kid. Filled the bathtub up with them. He, he had a blast with them when he was like three. <laughs> I'm at the pawn shop today to sell my old pottery duck. I got the duck from an antique shop in Scottsdale, Arizona. And ever since then, just weird things, you know, happening around the house. And couldn't figure out what it was until everything started falling around the duck. So that's why I'm looking to sell it. I'm asking $4,000 for the duck because it looks pretty old. I mean, it does have magic powers. I actually think it's kind of cool. It looks old. It looks like the pottery they made, you know, like a couple thousand years ago. The indigenous people of Mexico were incredible artists when it came to pottery. So, I mean, what do you think it was used for? Were you supposed to drink out of it or something? Um, it was probably something ceremonial. They truly believed that the animals, after you passed away, they would guide you to the next world. So that's why they did a lot of pottery with animals. What religion is the duck in? Probably an ancient religion that doesn't exist anymore. Ever since I've had it, it's just some weird things have been happening around the house. Well, what kind of weird stuff happens? Well, things like fall off the shelves. I hear weird noises. I'm going to go ahead and say it's probably not the duck's fault. <laughs> now, the craftsmanship's amazing. You can still see, whereas in the kiln, burn marks and everything on the bottom. So it went into a kiln like this, and it came out with those beautiful finishes on it. I mean, if you looked at this from three or four feet away, it looks like wood. I mean, that's how beautiful they did it. I think it's kind of amazing. How much are you looking to get out of this? About 4000 OK. Um, it's got me intrigued, because it could be very, very old. But it's an incredible condition, which is kind of scary. Because usually, there's chipped and, you know, if it's 2,000 years old, like, you know, you have kids playing with it and everything. <laughs> Any place you go in Mexico, there's like you know, counterfeit versions of stuff like this. I'd like someone to look at it, if you don't mind. Not at all. Can you give Bob a call? I have a friend who will know a lot about this. All right? Hang out. I'll be back in a little bit, OK? I'm hoping the expert can value it to my asking price, because I just I want to get rid of it. <laughs> What's up, Bob? How you doing? Hi there. How are you? That is quite the duck. I can tell you a couple of things about it. 2,000 years ago, they made animals to go into a tomb. And they'd lay the body, and they'd place these animals around. All of the animals that they would put in the tomb had a function. They'd be companions. They'd be spirit guides. But most of them were to be eaten in the afterlife. 
a big fat duck like this was going to be somebody's dinner in the afterlife. It would have only gone to somebody fairly important. And this form, very rare. Can I take a look at it? Yeah, go right ahead. One of the things that I'm noticing, it's got the burnishing lines. So they would use a stone, and they would polish this extensively before it would go in the kiln. Got nice manganese blooms. But I see a repair here. I see that there are repairs in the body. They're almost invisible. So whoever restored this, they did a fabulous job. So you think this is 100% real? Yeah, 100% real, 300 BC to 300 AD, ancient. So what's it worth? It's authentic, it's old, it's rare, it's stunning. 8,000. OK. You're not going to whip out like your x-ray machine or anything on it? I don't need to. It's got all the signs you want to see. Well, Bob, I appreciate you coming down. My pleasure. It's amazing to see anything that's 2,000 years old, but it was in a tomb that has been protected from the elements and the ages. So of all of the ancient cultures, Kalima seemed to survive the best. So you want 4,000 for it? OK, I mean, I give you four, because it, it does take a long time to sell it. OK, awesome. Right. Please. You want to go write her up? All right. Um, luckily, I'm not superstitious. So I'll meet you up over there. All right. And he's going to pay her in $100 bills. <laughs> Guy came in with a very interesting Chinese bowl from the Chen Lung period. I just don't know a lot about Chinese porcelain. So I called in a buddy of mine who is an expert in Asian antiques. Wow. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous piece of Chinese ceramic. It's still absolutely in impeccable condition. I mean, I'm going to say museum quality for what I've seen. I am Dr. Phineas Castle, and I'm an expert in Asian art and antiques and architecture. I lived in Asia for seven years, studying the art, the architecture, and the artifacts from an anthropological point of view. So tell me what you know about it. You know what I love about it? Do you see the iridescence of that bowl? The iridescence was actually done by grinding pearls and putting pearls into the glaze itself. This bowl was used to hold water and rose petals for the royal court. I, I find it really interesting. I find it really cool. But is it real? So to really know whether this is a Qian Lung bowl or not is to look on the back. As you look at ancient Chinese configurations, you're going to get six figures. One, two, three, four, five, six. So when I look at this, what I'm seeing here, this means Jia. And this says Qing, Jia Qing Dynasty. Unfortunately, this is not Qian Lung. This is another dynasty. And the Jia Qing Dynasty was after Qin Lung. This was the dynasty of his son. So it's Chia Chen, not Chen Lung. We are Chia Chen Chia Chen. OK, Chia Chen. So I absolutely do believe it is authentic to that dynasty. All right, so what do you think it's worth? OK, so I'm going to say a good, solid wholesale price on it would be $3,000. OK. Well, thanks, man. Yes, sir. Absolutely. I really appreciate it. I am absolutely amazed that there is a bowl like that floating around. How did that bowl get to Las Vegas? My, my hope is that someday it may end up in a museum. OK. Um, a final offer would be 4500 You know, um, I should pay 3000 for it. I'll pay 3500 because I find it a really fascinating piece, and I think it'll sell. Well, I have been offered more for it. Um, would you consider four? <sighs> um, I'll tell you what, I'll go 38, and I'm probably crazy for doing it. OK, I'll take the 38. OK, cool. I really appreciate it. Leave that right there. Follow me, and we'll go do some paperwork. 3,800 is pretty close to the 4,000 that I was really asking. <laughs> I am smiling because I can buy another piece. 